Hi there! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use thin sheets of paper clay to construct a vessel or a vase or really anything you want. When using paper clay, the principles are the same. I got the idea for this piece from my friend and mentor Jerry Bennett, who introduced me to using paper clay. To begin, I cut the clay slabs to my desired shape. Paper clay is very strong, so it's easy to manipulate when trying to attach it. I cut the sides at 45 degree angles to create tight joints. The beautiful thing about paper clay is that the clay can be joined to itself with just plain water. No scoring or slip involved. You just want to make sure that both sides have shiny water. These slabs are about between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick. It's beautiful that this is porcelain. Um, this is a standard 365 porcelain clay that I mixed with um, newspaper fibers to make the paper clay. And that it is, it makes it so strong that you can really play around with it like this and not have it fall apart like you might with um, just regular clay. You could use an armature to make your shape. Um, to do what I wanted to do, there really was no armature with the shapes I wanted to make available. So when you're attaching your sides, you see you want to make sure that they are very tight. Use your finger on the inside and the outside to close the joints very tightly and make them very smooth. You see here I'm using a pony roller to make sure I'm getting that nice and tightly closed. Last thing we want is joints opening up as it dries. So now I'm using water on the inside to close the, the gap there and make sure that's nice and tight. And you see that I really just kind of squeeze these two sides into the shape that I wanted it to be. And now a credit card. You see, I work on these for a long time because I really, really don't want anything popping open. <laughs> And now I've rolled another slab for the bottom. The bottom slab I made make slightly thicker. I'm sort of guesstimating where the bottom of the slab will go and painting it with water wider than I know that the clay is so that I'll be able to fit it wherever I place it. And now I'm just using my needle tool to draw the outline of the base, leaving about um, a quarter to a half inch extra so that I'll have some room for attaching it.
I'm adding more water. I want to be sure to get a good seal on these joints as well. And now I'm just using my credit card to lift up the bottom to keep it in place and form a, um, you know, a little ridge around the bottom. Smoothing it up. I like to use my sponge to make sure things are really smooth as I'm working. Here I'm using my um, heat gun to stiffen up the top because I'm getting ready to attach the next level to this piece. Um, another beautiful thing about paper clay is that you can attach pieces to one another at all stages pretty much of construction. This piece could be bone dry and I would be able to attach wet paper clay to it. Now here you see I'm just patting the bottom because I want to make sure that, that, um, th that the bottom is attached well and that um, if I decided to put flowers or something like that into this piece that, um, or some, any kind of liquid, it's not going to leak. The top has to be strong enough to be able to turn it over to do that. You see my fingers going inside a lot, always, always checking those joints. So here to make the next part, I'm using a texture roller to create some interest in the next level. Just straightening out the edges. Even though I you know, tried to keep some sort of um, precision and order to these slabs, one of the things that I like about hand building and like paper clay in general is that inevitably when you attach things, sometimes they just go on a little wonky and that's really okay with me because I really feel like it gives the, the piece personality and movement. And as we go through this, you'll, you'll see how that, that comes out. So what I'm doing here is also measuring the inside of the, uh, the base of the vessel so that I know approximately how long to cut that, um, that textured slab that I just made. You don't want too much overhang. You don't want to have to you know, do that much adjusting when you're attaching at the same time.
So now I'm going to shape it, you know, approximately to the shape of the bottom. Give it a little test. Sometimes when you're working with the porcelain, it might get a little bit dry. And so it, in this, as I'm bending this piece, it had, you know, a, a little bit of cracking. So I just take my finger and um, with some water on it and smooth it out. <clears throat> and now again, just, just using water, water on the inside, water on the piece that I'm going to be attaching. So you see it's a little tricky handling the slab as you're putting it in, but again that, that wonkiness, that little, little bit of funk I think is wonderful. So I'm attaching the bottom to the, the bottom of the sla wet slab to the base first, and then I will be uh, cutting and closing up that um, seam. You see I let it be a little bit larger <clears throat> than I knew it was going to have to be going to be so that I could cut a nice 45 degree angle for overlap. Just using my trusty X-Acto knife to do that cutting. With all the tools that I have in my studio, I think my X-Acto knife is the one that gets the, the biggest workout. Attaching the water to both sides. And again, um, attaching, pushing together from both the inside and the outside. So you see it kind of leans over to one side and um, I think that's really great. It just gives it like movement and life. And that just happened organically when I was attaching it. I don't like to plan too much when I make clay pieces and I don't generally sketch. Um, if I do it's very minimally. I really kind of just let the clay or the texture I'm working with um, just spark my imagination and guide me to what, what to do with it. Yes, you can use scissors to cut paper clay. I really should be using very small ones instead of these big scissors though.
so you see now I'm just rolling out this coil and I'm just going to be using it as decoration around the belly of the pot to camouflage where the pieces were joined and also to add more interest I can't make the piece long, I can't make it long enough to attach one piece because I want to add texture to it. And this, um, these texture blocks that I have would not accommodate one long rope. So to get this texture, I am using wood that has grooves in it and I'm using the grooves in opposite directions. It's even a little tricky with this shorter coil. I feel like a seamstress fitting a sash onto a dress or something. <laughs> So I'm making, uh, I'm going to attach them in um, a few different pieces. I also made some coils for the um, little arms I'll be attaching. Water on both sides, water at the joint and water on the coil to attach. And here's Ceramics Cat. <laughs> so nosy. So here we jumped ahead a little bit and you see that I attached another um, row of, of textured clay above the, above the first one that we did and I also attached another rope of texture in between.
So the process with paper clay is, again, you know, keep your, um, you can go pretty thin between an eighth and a quarter of an inch with your slabs. And, you know, when you do texture, you just, you, you know, roll it on and um, to join your pieces, you want to have 45 degree angles and, you know, where, nece where necessary with joints. And you want to make sure that both pieces where you're joining um, are cut at 45s and you use each, each side has shiny water on it. So these, you know, you can use this technique for anything that you decide to make. So this is pretty much part one. I didn't want to make this video too long. Um, and this is also where I needed to, to take a break. Although you can attach wet pieces uh, to dry, it's really best, um, as with regular clay, to you know to work on your piece moist or at least semi-moist. Um, especially if you're going to attach things around a piece, like like I did with the uh, texture ropes on, on this piece, because if you try to attach them to a body that's already pretty dry they're going to shrink at a different rate and they're going to crack and fall off and then you're going to have a lot of repairing to do. And here I'm just using those smaller scissors to trim the top of the, the piece that I attached. I'm trying to make it pretty even, eyeballing it. So here, I'm afraid that the video, I think, is going to get cut off, but this is where I am attaching a lip to the inside of the top. Um, I have a wad of clay there, you see, and what I'm going to do is to roll a coil and simply um, attach the coil inside of the lip, or in, 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 inside of the, the top there, and then to um, just, just flatten the edge of it. So it's just attaching a coil inside and flattening the edge of it once it's attached. You'll see in the next video. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you will come back and join me for the next one when I will be making a lid and feet and arms for this piece. See you then.